With more tools coming to market every day and businesses expanding their environments into cloud, hybrid environments and beyond, it's harder than ever for businesses to really have the visibility they need to understand what's happened when something goes wrong. We're here today with Austin Pearson, the Client Director of Science ScienceLogic, to discuss whether or not IT operations have allowed business services to get out of control. Hi Austin, thank you for your time today and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to get into one of my favourite topics today. <laughs> okay, so we have some simple questions and we're going to start with the big one. How well do modern organisations understand their environments? Uh, that, that is a question that I always ask my clients and I would say it is very, very rare that anybody understands their environment. And I think one of the big evidence for that is the rules that the Financial Conduct Authority have brought in in the last couple of years around operational resilience because so many banks as we know have had big failures and they've not been able to bring their systems back online quickly which has impacted all of us directly where we can't get money out you know um, <laughs> and things um, and so they've had to bring in legislation that are forcing financial services institutes to try and understand what IT they've got and how it fits together so that they could then um, create and um, or be able to bring those services back up again. And we're not seeing that just in financial services either. There's a whole big raft of legislation all around Europe um, that is forcing businesses to really try and get to grips with what they have. So without this visibility then, what happens when something goes wrong? I think we've all been the uh, victim of these, right? A, on a small scale, you know, just something as simple as phoning up when your mobile phone goes wrong. And the first thing that people ask you is, well, what phone have you got? And what model is it? And blah, blah. And you think, you sold me this phone three months ago. How do you not know this information, right? But then when you're talking about that on the scale of a large organization, you know, and they've got something like somebody can't get money out of a cash machine um, or hundreds of people can't get money out of a cash machine, suddenly they're trying to say, okay, so what cash machines are down? How do those cash machines relate to our backend systems? What networks do they go through? You know, how are they all performing? And out of all the hundreds of components that make up our ATM network, as an example, you know, which is the one component that is causing the problem? And that has been a, a challenge for IT environments for, um, and organizations for so long. And in fact, I was working with a bank in South Africa recently and on average, it took them 39 hours to find out where the issue was. And they had a record of having 300 people together on a single war room call trying to find out where the problem is. So it's still absolutely prevalent today and causes chaos. So how can AI and automation help remediate these challenges? It's a really interesting one because the problem that we're, that we're really trying to solve is when something goes wrong, how do you find out where the problem is, what service is affected and get it to the right engineer to be able to fix that problem or even automatically resolve that. <clears throat> and typically what we've found, uh, and I've been working in this space for almost 20 years now, is that there's so many tools that organizations are dealing with that it's hard for them to see the wood for the trees. And they've never really focused on solving the data issue itself. Do we have great data? Can we then get the visibility we need and then put a layer of automation on top of that. And that typically allows you to drive down your time to resolve issues into sub 10 minutes, which is amazing, going from hours down to minutes, right? 
Um, but if you could take that even further then and use some form of machine learning, uh, for example, to look through all the log files that you would give to an engineer and say, instead of looking through these thousand log files, here's the 10 that are making a difference. Then you can get that six minutes down to two or three minutes and um, potentially and even start to automate even further and do things like restart services. So you don't need a person involved. And one of our clients um, recently automated 85,000 of their incidents. So no person was involved and it was just found, resolved and closed um, automatically, which brings down not just your cost, um, of course, because you don't need people to do that, but it improves your service to your customers and therefore improves your NPS score and makes clients more likely to stay with you as well. I think people love the idea of AI and automation, but I think they're quite intimidated by the perceived complexity of it. How does it fit into my environment? Importantly, how much is it going to cost? So really, how can organizations get started in today's climate? Does anyone really have the budget? Great, great question. I think there's a couple of things in that. So I would say the first one is to really understand what the outcomes are that the business is trying to drive to. Because if I work with one business, they're trying to be the best at digital bank and therefore they want their NPS score up and they want their customer service to be as uh, as best as it possibly can. Um, if I w walk into another customer, they might be trying to drive cost out wherever possible and therefore automation to take out cost is the most important thing um, for them. So understanding what your business drivers are, how that relates to your IT environment, so whether it's driving down MTTR, taking people out um, through automation, whatever it is, is absolutely the starting point. And we all have great data in IT to be able to look at that, which sits in our ITSM tool in our service desk. Um, so doing some analysis on that, so that, and then using that analysis to drive your outcomes is definitely the way to go forward, because you will then find actually we can take a load of cost out typically around 40 percent out of level one and level two operations that allows you to then fund the project and some um absolutely for sure i think one thing we've really learned is that from the business perspective businesses have uh, put in ai for things like chatbots as a as a good example but they've ended up having a team of data scientists to transform that data to help do that project. In IT, we really need to learn from that. There's no point putting a layer of AI over all the bad data that we've got in IT that has never kind of fixed this problem for years and years. You need to attack the data problem first without data scientists, get the right data in place um, and then attach AI to um, <clears throat> to that once you've got really great data and great levels of automation in place. Well, I think that about covers the broad spectrum of the discussion. Thank you so much for your time today, Austin. Um, just one more question then, if we take it right back to the first question we started with, have IT operations let business services get out of control? What do you think? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I cannot remember going and speaking to any CIO who could tell me what the health availability and risk of their key services were at any time. Um, there are a few who might have availability um, but very rare that they understand the risk in those services, which is where you want to get to so that you can be proactive and fix things before they go wrong. Um, so it's very, very much at the, t at the top of mind of most IT organizations right now. Um, and, um, uh, and definitely a problem that needs solving.